Hello, welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control, IIT Bombay. I warmly welcome you to the week number 11 of our course. And um, I hope, I really hope that we've had a very good journey together. Um, we have already learned several methods, several algorithms that will uh, help design robust adaptive nonlinear laws uh, that drive autonomous systems such as the SpaceX satellite that you see in our background. Um, with this uh, sort of an introduction, I want to talk a little bit, uh, go back a little bit to what we were doing uh, in the previous week. So we actually started off talking about uh, you know what is robustness and you know, what is the need for robustness in adaptive control and we uh, got a pretty good idea that in the presence of disturbance uh, a disturbance that would not really uh, trouble a non-adaptive loss uh, what happens in adaptive control setting is that this disturbance can result in our parameters going unbounded and subsequently the control also becoming unbounded in order to maintain a nice bound on the tracking error. Uh, this was of course rather undesirable and we uh, first talked about tackling this using the parameter projection method right? in which we um, assumed some uh, prior knowledge of bounds on the parameter and this prior knowledge of bounds on the parameter we design adaptive laws using you know projection functions like time hyperbolic functions which will allow you to keep the parameter values within you know this given bounds all right um, now uh, one of the of course we did the stability analysis and we figured out some nice properties for such uh, projection based adaptive control laws um, one of the sort of um, issues or well i mean one of the sort of concerns that uh, may be raised on in such solutions is that you require knowledge of the bound and parameters so it's a very reasonable assumption but if you do not have such a knowledge then there also exist solutions uh, they're called the sigma modification and the epsilon modification uh, the basic idea being that the standard adapt certainty equivalence adaptive law is augmented with a damping term which was not present in the typical certainty equivalence law right and what this damping term does is it creates a residual set in both a tilde that is the parameter error and the packing error now one of the issues well couple of issues one of the issues is that even if the disturbance is zero we only get bounded performance with such kind of uh, analysis right which may more or less be okay for most uh, practicing engineers uh, but may not be okay with some theoreticians right they would say that if there's no external disturbance why am i still getting uh, you know sort of um, poor poorer performance or you know uh, you know not ex not ideal performance right the other issue is that uh, because of the structure of uh, a hat dot when e goes to zero that is e becomes very close to zero you see that this term starts to dominate significantly and whatever parameter value has been learned a hat suppose a hat has gotten rather close to the true value a uh, but that gets unlearned because this term will uh, push every a hat to zero right so you unlearn the true parameter value and this can of course cause a deterioration of the tracking error performance also and this is where the epsilon modification came in where instead of a constant gain sigma, the gain is now in absolute value of the error itself. Therefore, when the error goes to zero, then this term also goes to zero. And whatever parameter value you've learned until that point remain as it is. So there is no change. All right. So that's uh, sort of what you would do, the best you can do in some sense. Right. 
Um, again, of course, this also suffers from the same issue. In fact, the residual set expressions are exactly same as before. So even the absence of the disturbance, we will uh, get only uniform ultimate bound witness. All right. But in any case, these were rather useful solutions, I hope. Yeah, I mean, for for realistic applications, these are rather useful solutions. And uh, either projection or sigma epsilon modification are more than sufficient to impart robustness to your adaptive control against unmodeled uh, uh, disturbances or unknown disturbances. Right. So as long as things, the disturbances are bounded, you are good to go. Now, uh, we have by this time seen um, covered more or less a uh, large breadth of the adaptive control of course it's uh, like any other field it's uh, huge and, and uh, always more to learn more to do and more remains to be taught but uh, of course we can't expect to do everything but we have uh, covered a very large portion of adaptive control and most importantly all of you have been enabled uh, to do your own design, yeah, own adaptive law designs, um, you know, as you go along. Yeah. Now, what we want to do henceforth is more modern ideas, you know, or ideas that are becoming more popular now in adaptive control. Uh, one of the first, uh, you know, sort of topics that we want to do, and this is where we will start today, is. Uh, basically, initial excitation-based adaptive control. Now, as you can see, this is uh, not too far from, you know, uh, pretty recent work. And so, one of the sort of issues in adaptive control is parameter convergence, right? Or parameter learning, as uh, you would say in modern terminology, right? Now, this parameter learning uh, requires uh, persistence of excitation. This is well known. Now, persistence of excitation, as the word says, is persistent, right? So it has to exist for all time for you to be able to do good parameter identification. And this may not always be possible, right? This may not, especially when you are sort of close to being done tracking, you want to move on and probably do another tracking problem. So you may not have enough uh, persistence yeah, in your signals for you to have learned the parameter value perfectly. So a lot of research uh, went into uh, relaxing this persistence condition, right? And this is what is called initial, well, this one of these methods is called initial excitation based adaptive control. And uh, the authors here are from uh, IIT Delhi. So very local, you're being vocal for local. Yeah, um, but very interesting bit of work. Uh, interesting sequence of work on relaxing persistence excitation, right? So this is sort of a reference point. So what we'll do is we will look at a simple version of what they propose. Of course, they are proposing all of this for, as you can see, euler Lagrange system, which is essentially the standard model for uh, robot systems. So we will, of course, look at slightly simpler uh, you know, version of things for classroom illustration purposes. You can very easily extend this to, uh, you know, once you understand this, you can very easily extend this to the robot problem or any other, you know, um, control problem you might have. All right. So let's begin. This is where we start our this week's lectures. Right, lecture 11.1. Right. So, as usual, let's uh, continue with a single integrator setting. Right. So, I have a single integrator model. This could have been nonlinear or linear. It doesn't matter. Nothing much changes there. It's okay. As long as you have this kind of a linear parameterization, A. So, A is unknown. There is a control. I mean, A is you know, more often than not, A would be positive because otherwise this is stable and nothing much to do. And the typical objective is to track a reference signal R. And so, as always, we construct an error signal X minus R. But before we go on to do any control design, we start to look at the parameter design. Okay. So, this is going to be similar to the non-certainty equivalence method that we saw in projection and uh, 
algorithm in the projection based adaptive control algorithm and um, so this also has a similar feel in the sense that the parameter update yeah is sort of done separately from the Lyapunov analysis okay and we'll of course talk about it a little bit more later on so what we do is we want to express our system any system for that matter in this case a single integrator but we want to express any system in a standard uh, regressor parameter form and what is the standard regressor parameter form we want to write our dynamical system as y theta equal to u yeah if there's an unknown connected to you of course that's a separate problem that can be dealt with also but right now we only deal with the problem where there is the control gain is not unknown in fact it's identity so we write the system as y theta equal to u this is what we do for uh, all dynamical systems not just for the single integrator so in order to do this for the single integrator you notice that i have constructed a regressor and a theta now the interesting thing to see here is that because i want to write it as y theta equal to u i have no choice but to augment the a with a one in theta yeah, otherwise this dynamics and this will not match yeah? this i have to do and this is common in this uh, uh, you know initial excitation based adaptive control we have to do this um, that we have to augment our parameter a with a one so there is an over parameterization we have we are trying to uh, identify something that we already know right? one is not unknown but we will try to identify it yeah so already you see one uh, if you may one um, disadvantage if you may of this method all right so you have y theta equal to u okay so where y is the regressor which is basically x dot and x and theta is one and a and u is of course retained as such okay. so that's what we mentioned here there's over parameterization as one in theta is not unknown all right right now we start with the process of defining filters again this should be uh reminiscent of non c e projected projection based adaptive loss yeah this is should be reminiscent of non c projection based adaptive loss in fact why is it so reminiscent because most of these authors have followed an earlier author's work yeah so slotin had done had sort of proposed this idea uh, in 80s yeah you can look up his ref this reference yeah i mean you can find this reference so uh, therefore a lot of authors are using similar ideas so even the projection uh, based adaptive control the non c version uh, was by akella and uh, they also are motivated of course by this slotin's work in the 80s yeah, that's the idea now what's the idea again in there also if you remember uh, in this equation uh, you essentially filtered everything that was known to you all known quantities got filtered right so what is known the regressor is known and the control is known so both of these are passed through a filter a low pass filter if you may uh, with some bandwidth sigma which is positive of course and the additional thing here is you uh, ask for you or, or you require uh, zero initial conditions right so in in our earlier uh, sort of result uh, the initial conditions were not specified but here we are specifying the initial condition right to be zero these are again filters that are implemented in theory i mean in the sense that they're implemented on a computer they're not real data coming from any real dynamical system so we don't have to worry about uh, the initial conditions not being exactly zero. So once uh, we have assumed this sort of a filter structure, uh, apologize, right? This sort of a filter structure and some initial conditions, I can actually solve for this. Yeah, so we are sort of trying to verify the implementability of this filter structure. Filter, all right. So 
we just integrate this using standard variation of parameters integration so the solution of this for zero initial condition is just this e to the power minus sigma t integral from zero to t e to the power sigma tau y tau d tau all right so that's it this is the uh, solution and now uh, i can substitute for y which is just x dot and minus x right so this is actually if you notice in this case um, y is actually in right it's a it's a two row vector row vector of size two all right um, so now one of the if you look at this first term here there's a little bit of a problem typically in a uh, state space system x dot is not measured right? you measure the state but not the derivatives of the state so this is the typical assumption in a uh, state space system all right so so the question is can we still implement this kind of a filter and the answer is yes yeah otherwise i'm assuming the i'm sorry i'm sorry for that otherwise the authors would not have proposed it i guess right so if you look at this term we want to see how to deal with this particular term this term is of course implemented it right no problem right because x is available so all i need to do is integrate this or whatever i mean or, or just solve this differential equation with this x piece no problem right so uh, that's what we do we look at the first piece of the integral here which is this guy yeah, not implementable because x dot is typically not available for measurement this is very standard assumption in um, state space design okay all right now how do we resolve this we just do integration by parts on this guy so what is integration of parts by parts of this guy it is just whatever the scaling remains as it is and then you have first times integral of second and then minus integral of differential of first times integral of second all right we're just applying the integral by parts formula here. Okay. and now you see something nice has happened what is this something nice you see that this thing is now implementable and it is i mean x is known anyway this is implementable we'll anyway look at it further and this quantity can be evaluated so this if i evaluate this whole thing right here you get this you get x t x at time t minus e to the power minus sigma t x zero minus sigma e minus sigma t zero to t e to the power sigma tau x dot dz right so so nice everything looks like an integral uh, integral uh, or uh, integrable term everything looks like uh, it's using measurements that are available right so that's good in fact if you look at uh, this particular quantity sorry this particular quantity this is actually the solution of this system with zero initial conditions all right very standard very easy to verify right excellent so uh, that's what we do we just write it in terms of this new variable h just for ease of notation otherwise you can directly use this also no problem so therefore what do we have we have yf is actually equal to e to the power minus sigma t e to the power sigma tau x tau d tau this is the second term by the way this is just the second term here right i hope i got the sign correct i think this should be a the second term is a negative term so i think this should be a negative sign i believe so this is minus e to the power minus sigma tau zero to t e to the power sigma tau x tau d tau and then you have x t from here right uh, minus e to the power minus sigma t x zero from here minus sigma h from here and if you now look at this term also this is also in fact equal to h and this is also equal to h in this particular case so this actually becomes minus sigma plus one h plus x t minus e to the power minus sigma t x zero right so the important thing to remember is that h is implementable because x is known therefore yf is also implementable all right 
pretty straightforward okay because x is known and h is known so in fact i can be more precise here and say that this is actually h uh, evaluated at t right h evaluated at t okay great so so we have essentially constructed a filter yeah an unusual filter because we also have the derivative of the states in here uh, that is being filtered right? but the important thing to remember is that this filter is implemented excellent great because you don't want to design something that's not implemented correct right now let's look at some properties of these filtered variables right if you remember even in the again in the projection based uh, adaptive control design also we wrote we sort of uh, try to relate the or write the dynamics in terms of the filtered variables also and so we are sort of doing something similar not exactly the same but something similar so if you look at this yf dot it is just minus sigma yf plus a y right so if i multiply by theta on both sides i get this and notice that y times theta equals to u from our regressor parameter form so i've just substituted here and now because theta is a constant this is possible only because theta is a constant so if i take the derivative if i take y of theta as a variable and i take the derivative i get exactly the left hand side and on the right hand side i have minus sigma again times y of theta plus u and y of theta at zero is zero because y of at zero is zero right so if you compare it with the uf equation i will write it here for your reference If you compare it with the uf equation what do you note you note that these two sorry these two equations are exactly the same right these two are exactly the same equations with the same initial conditions right so it's just different notation so what does it mean it means uf is equal to yf theta right so this is very similar to what we did in projection based adaptive control right even there we found an equation in terms of the filtered variables and that's exactly what we are doing here too right because the original equation was y theta equals to u in the regressor parameter form and we notice that just like in the projection based adaptive control method the filtered equation also has a very similar structure just that the y is replaced by yf and the u is replaced by uf all right and this is of course a very important property that gets used subsequently all right so remember uh, so that's what i would say uh, similar to original y theta equal to u as in uh, projection based adaptive control yeah again not a surprise most of us researchers are always motivated by some past work and multiple researchers could be motivated by one seminal piece of past work so this work by slotin in the 80s uh, who also proposed uh, you know having filters uh, is of course something that a lot of people refer to yeah and so of course you have a uh, very similar uh, feel to this as opposed to as sorry uh, when you compare with projection based adaptive control right uh, now one thing we know is that the performance of this system does improve by adding filters how do we know this suppose we didn't do anything slotin did so they also showed that the performance improves and also we did in the projection based adaptive control you remember that because of this filtered variables you got some kind of a um, attractive set here yeah you see you got an attractive invariant set yeah which is omega equal to 0 yeah we got an omega equal to 0 which was an attractive invariant set so this is sort of what slotin also proved right and that's what you get when you have a filtered uh, you know like a filter system 
you can expect to get this kind of um, convergence to some attractive set kind of behavior which improves the performance of the adaptive control however this does not allow you to get rid of persistence yeah i mean even here uh, in this system if you notice all you are guaranteed to get is that omega goes to zero and what was omega omega was some uh, complicated function of the unknown yeah so this quantity going to zero does not necessarily mean the parameters are converged right it's just that this quantity is going to zero and you need some kind of persistence condition on probably xf or something to get parameter convergence all right so that's the important thing to remember that persistence condition is not uh, cannot be done away with just because you filtered it and this is the sort of lesson that uh, was well understood and in order to uh, you know relax the persistence condition these authors that is uh, shubhendu and shayan and uh, indrakar from iit delhi they uh, proposed the introduction of a second layer filter right so this is the innovation okay the addition of a second layer filter so earlier it was just filtering y now they filter yf how has a very specific structure yif now is the new variable yif dot is just minus yf transpose yf again with zero initial condition and uif dot is just yf transpose ui uf with zero initial condition okay so this is the second layer filter which will in fact help us to get rid of the uh, persistence of excitation requirement all right excellent so what did we look at today um we started talking about uh, one particular method which helps relax persistence of excitation condition which may be a rather steep demand on a dynamical system because having excitation uh, infinitely is not a very feasible requirement therefore in order to relax such a requirement there is some recent work which uh, uses uh, which relies on the filter ideas that we've already seen in projection based adaptive control the only thing is instead of a one layer filter that you have in the projection based adaptive controller which is again motivated by slotin's work in the 80s um here we have a two layer adaptive filter okay and we will see how um, this will result in construction of an adaptive law without uh, you know have without requiring a lyapunov function and uh, subsequently we'll also see how it relaxes the requirement for uh, you know persistent excitation right so that's really the idea um and we'll see how uh, this helps improve uh, you know the system performance right so we are looking at a single integrator system of course to keep things simple but once uh, we understand that once we can follow this uh, we can very well uh, follow the work on double integrators and and uh, you know we can also work with all lagrange systems spacecraft dynamics and so on you know things like again autonomous systems such as what you see in the background here all right great so i'll see you again in the next session uh, thank you Thank you.